in the UAE, the easiest way to, to, to look at it is there's a regulation that says you cannot borrow more than seven times your annual salary. So that's one number that you want to remember. Yeah. You know, Let's say you make 10 million dirhams a year, you can borrow 70 million dirhams. Hey, we're uh, doing property. pretty good now. Right? Aren't we? Yeah. No. <laughs> Hello, I'm Scott Bond, and welcome to Home Finders, a podcast by Property Finder, where you can tune in to learn the ins and outs of mortgages, real estate, and all things properties from industry leaders. Today, we're talking about a complex and challenging topic, mortgage, but we're here to make it easy and break it down simple for you. Joining me today is one of my good friends and colleagues, Mohammed Kaswani, Managing Director for Mortgage Finder. Mohammed, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Scott. So Kaswani, yeah. you're a lifelong real estate industry expert. You've been in mortgage for a while. What are you seeing out there right now in the real estate industry when it comes to mortgage that can kind of bring some ease to people with this, with this complex topic? Yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's definitely a clear trend, Scott, of more and more borrowers going to intermediate mortgage channels as opposed to going directly to the banks. Um, so the, the industry of mortgage brokerage, if you'd like, is gaining more prominence in our local market. Funny enough, I started my career in mortgages back in the U.S. Um, in the early 2000s. Um, and I believe back then, uh, mortgage brokerages wasn't a thing in the UAE, where by now, uh, a larger percentage of mortgage origination is going through intermediate mortgage channels. So you've had a chance to see mortgages in multiple countries now at this point. Yep. You know, what are some of the learnings as you know we continue to to develop here? Uh, maybe the products you've seen, the products you haven't seen. Maybe what are some of the complexities? Uh, what's your insights on, on on the industry as a whole today? I think. Look, I mean, looking at it uh, even from a from a global perspective, the mortgage industry is still significantly behind on digitization, right? And there's still a huge opportunity to further improve the experience. Um, naturally, the mortgage industry is one of the most regulated industries um, within, even within the banking sector because there's a lot of risk involved and there's a lot of involvement from the regulators to ensure that consumers and borrowers are protected. Um, and with, you know, with, with, a, with, a heavy, with a heavily regulated space, it becomes a bit more challenging to add additional digitization. Um, having said that, we're, we're, we're definitely making great progress. I mean, particularly here in the UAE, where um, you know, if you look at the, the wider real estate space, there's a lot more reforms that have been introduced to the industry in the past few in the past few years. You're looking at a fully digital transaction now, and I'm definitely seeing a trend with the banks playing catch up and and trying to follow suit. Um, and that is why at Property Finder, we you know we're choosing to invest in Mortgage Finder and. Uh, you know, try to add value to our to our consumers or our borrowers and home buyers in making that transaction more seamless yeah. or less painful. It's exciting that it's a safe place for a consumer to be able to come to learn more information. And I want to transition to that as well. You know, what is the first question that a home buyer, a home seeker, should be asking themselves when they start this journey? It is, how much can I afford? Um, there is a um, and we, you know, we, we always try to educate our home buyers um, early on to get a clear understanding of their mortgage before starting to look for a home, right? Because you want to find out how much you can afford. Um, you know, you want to apply every possible stress test to your financial scenario. Um, and, you know, before you go out, look for properties and get disappointed. Because as much as it is an incredibly emotional process, and you and I have gone through it before, um, it is ultimately a financial decision when you're when you're buying a home. So getting your finances in order before your search is is the wise thing to do. Yeah, it's the single largest pur purchase that anybody will ever make. So making sure you're in the right hands with the right people and you know your setup for success is is crucial. I have yeah. to imagine that your advisors are there to help people through that journey as well, right? Absolutely. It, so look, advisory is the essence of why a mortgage broker should exist, right? The, and, and this is something that we take very seriously at Mortgage Finder. What we do is we have a lot of measures that go to ensure that all of our borrowers are receiving the right advice for them. Um, and it doesn't just go with the training that our advisors receive, but also all of the you know digital and technology tools that we apply 
to ensure that level of consistency. Because ultimately, um, you know, you look at Property Finder having somewhat of a, a, a market authority position. So trust is a very important factor. And for us to have the assurance that all of our borrowers are receiving the right advice is something that we take very seriously. Um, beyond that, and the way we measure success more than anything is, um, you know, like I said, any which way you look at it, getting a mortgage is a bit of a daunting and difficult experience, right? So, and the reason we exist is not only for the advisory part and making sure we help the borrower navigate which mortgage product, um, you know, what's the right, you know, fixed variable, et cetera, but also to hold your hands throughout the journey. You know, submitting your documents, getting the pre-approval, managing the valuation, all of this drama that you go through in closing your mortgage transaction. Why would somebody come to Mortgage Finder versus just going to their local bank? We see, you know, advertisements all the time for, you know, great mortgage rates and, you know, people wanting our, our, my business as a consumer. So why start with Mortgage Finder? When you go to your bank, the bank is going to offer you the mortgage products that they have, right? Whereas when you go to a mortgage advisor, such as Mortgage Finder, you're getting access to each and every single lender in the market, right? Now, uh, and also access to the knowledge and advisory of those, you know, the advisors that we have, having been in the business for, you know, since the mortgage industry was, was, was launched in the UAE. It, what matters here then is absolutely recommend going to an intermediate channel such as a mortgage broker as opposed to the bank because like i said it gives you access to all products but then when you're choosing your mortgage advisor making sure that you're working with a trusted brand is very very important so with that being said tell me about the concept of affordability we hear this all the time you just mentioned get your finances in order you know make sure you have purchase power but what does this concept of affordability really mean so uh, Look, there are, just like every other country with a regulated banking sector, banks usually uh, put certain standards in place to ensure that the borrower is protected and also ensure that the bank's risk is managed properly. Right? Um, and usually these guidelines differ from one market to another. In the UAE, the easiest way to, to, to look at it is there's a regulation that says you cannot borrow more than seven times your annual salary. So that's one number that you want to remember. Okay. You know, let's say you make 10 million dirhams a year, you can borrow 70 million dirhams. Hey, we're uh, doing property. pretty good now. Right? Aren't we? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but joking aside, so let's say, for example, somebody's salary is, I don't know, 30,000 dirhams, that's 360. Um, you take 360 multiplied by, by seven, and that is the, the highest mortgage amount that they would qualify for. The other metric is going to be that your total liabilities. So your mortgage payment, along with all other outstanding liabilities that you have, so your credit card payments, your car payment, your personal loan payment, all of them should be less than 50% of your monthly uh, of your monthly income. Um, the easiest way to answer this question is very simple. You go to Property Finder, you've got an amazing mortgage calculator that gives you that answer in about five seconds. So one of my last questions is, you know, what should I avoid doing if I'm in this cycle of looking to possibly buy a home and work with a mortgage broker? Maybe I'll, 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 I'll twist it to tell you what the things that you should be looking for, right? Uh, one, is, and I advise this to everybody who is looking to buy a home, whether in the short, medium, or long term, is make sure that your credit score is in order, right? In other words, pay your bills on time so that you can maintain a good credit standing because that will impact your ability to get an approval. Two is also be mindful of all of the different fees that you may not necessarily be aware of if you hadn't buy, bought a home in the past, right? So your 4% DLD registration, your 2% agency commission, um, you know, mortgage registration fee, valuation, this, this, and that. Our mortgage advisors will help you navigate this and, and have a clear understanding of what to expect in terms of the amount that you will need up front. Um, the other thing is, we always advise people to, um, you know, leave some cash aside um, to, you know, ensure stability and make sure that you're able to continue servicing your mortgage payment moving forward. We advise people, normally borrowers, not to um, get their mortgage from the same bank where their salary transfer is because in the event that you want to, you know, transition to a different business 
or maybe leave the country, it becomes, um, it, it adds a bit of, a, of, of complexity to your life. Um, and like I said, definitely get your pre-approval before uh, searching for a house. And the last thing is uh, leverage on the expertise of, say, our mortgage advisors to help you read and navigate the MOU, right? There are certain clauses in your MOU or your purchase contract that a lot of us don't really pay attention to. For example, the va- you know your valuation clause. Uh, you know what happens if a property uh, is valued at less than what you had offered for, etc. So make sure that you get expert advice on navigating the, the the purchase contract. Okay, so you gave me some great advice. Start the process early. Make sure I have my finances in order. Yep. You know, make sure that uh, my credit is is good. Uh, understand my affordability by using the calculators that Mortgage Finder has, mm-hmm. um, and you know, come have a conversation with somebody over at the Mortgage Finder team. Sounds Absolutely. like a great place to start. Absolutely. Before we wrap up, though, I have to ask you. So we've seen all sorts of amazing transactions that are taking place. Okay, I've got a hundred million to spend. We're dreaming. We won the lottery or Mazoo's, however we want to look at it. Uh-huh. We ha- we have something fun in our hands where we won this money. Where are you going to buy at? You can buy anywhere. Let's dream for a second. Where is it in the UAE? So I, we, we you know, my family and I, we recently bought a, uh, we, we bought a villa in, uh, in JVT. I see a lot of value in that, in that community um, because there's very, very few uh, properties in town that has a larger plot size. And that gives you the flexibility to, you know, expand your space and et cetera. Um, and naturally, I'm a big fan of that uh, of that community. Now, the, the the short answer is it really depends on every buyer's specific needs, right? I always say, you know, stick to the basics. You know, try at least do your best to live close to your kid's school. You know, do your best to live close to your work if it's if it's within affordability. Um, make sure that you're working with a super agent, um, you know, and, and a nice property finder plug there. Right? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, make sure that you've got the right people supporting you on, on, on this journey. And, you know, property finder has naturally so many resources to help you make this decision, right? What are the most popular neighborhoods? You can check out the blog. Your local real estate agent is also going to provide you with a lot of insights to say, Hey, What's the difference between Jumeirah Park and Jumeirah Islands and Jumeirah Village Triangle and et cetera? Um, or the by hills versus the ranches versus et cetera. Mohammed, I want to say thank you. You're a wonderful guest today, full of expert and information for anybody who's looking to buy a home for the first time, uh, or perhaps they've been through the process a couple of times. I think that they probably learned a couple of new things today as well. So uh, thank you again. And uh, for those of you who are out there watching and listening, I want to say thank you for tuning in to Home Finders, uh, your podcast with all things to help you navigate this complex real estate industry. You can go on over to propertyfinder.ae to learn more. And uh, we'll see you next week.